Hi there. Welcome to Sunnyside Journals. I have a little quickie today. I'm just doing a, a little task here that's fast and I thought I'll bring you along because I'm trying something different and I'm actually rather excited about it. So um, I've been working on words here and I have the text block ready to go. Uh, it's all signed and dated in the back there and um, it's it's ready to be seated in its little saddle there, but uh, this is the time that I like to, um, if I'm going to put some lace or some cheesecloth or anything raggedy out the ends or a permanent bookmark, I will do this now. So I'm going to, um, I want to stand it upright. <sighs> I don't feel like grabbing, I don't feel like grabbing my little upright book holder thing that I often use. I'm just putting a little padding here because this is one of those journals I've made that looks like it's got lots of stuff hanging out of it, ready to fall out, but it's not. But I don't want to bend it while I work on it. So I, I'm going to make a little padding there for it. And I'm going to use my trusty bricks. My handy dandy bricks. Thank you to Sophia at Save Your Books for this. Um, she said, get yourself some bricks, wrap them, you'll use them all the time. And she's right, I use them all the time. There we go. So that just gives a little padding. This is the, this is the little doily. My mother made it and uh, I usually put it in the background when I want it to really look nice when I'm doing a flip through. So what I want to do is, um, I want to put some lace at the header and footer today and normally um, I would use like maybe that end and put that like imagine that at the end which is very very pretty but this book as you can see it looks it looks a little ratty on purpose I like it so I'm I came up with a different way um, and I was inspired by this little piece of lace that, I mean, I will, I save things. You just never know when you're going to want a ratty old piece of lace when you're junk journaling. Am I right? And I really liked how this looked. And I thought, I think I want, I think I want that ratty end. Let me move this down so you can see. I think I want that ratty end sticking out so that it looks really grungy. Isn't that neat? Um, so that's what we're going to do. Um, this, I'm pretty sure this is cotton. This cotton lace. I find it all the time at my thrift stores and I finally, duh, figured out why. Um, at least where I live in Canada, you can get this at uh, Dollarama. It, they've just got tons and tons of it. So, and uh, obviously that's why, you know, people buy it to use it for various things because it's cute. It's pretty. It's already comes, you can get it in white or you can get it in this creamy off-white beige color. Um, so, I mean, so far I've been lucky. I just keep grabbing, gobbling it up at my thrift stores, but I will, would not be averse to, for the price, going over to my Dollarama if I ever need more. I don't mind that. That's a good deal. So uh, what I did was I measured it and cut it to the width of the spine. And that gave me two exactly the same size pieces. Now you'll see this already looks kind of nasty looking because I've already been at it and I'm putting it here like this so that that ratty end looks really ratty um, let's just go ahead and do this one I was able to refill uh, I washed out my second sugar bell bottle that usually I have um, I had white tacky glue in it that I was not using. It's it's sat there for the whole time that I've owned it. I filled it 
I'm just trimming this a little bit because I know it's too wide. I filled it the day I brought them home and then proceeded to never use it. Well, it's it's much better being used as for Fabri-Tac. That's good. That gives me lots of ratty. All right, so I'm going to just put some. Uh, this is three in one. But whatever I can get on sale is whether it's whether it be 3-in-1 or Fabri-Tac, I use them interchangeably. So I'm just putting that along there. I'm going to move it along a bit, and I'm going to trim that side off. I want that well glued down because I don't want this to continue fraying. I only want it to fray so much. Turn that a bit. And take that off. I don't want it to bulk up the gutters, the hinges, when this goes to sit in its in its new home. there that looks neat let's do the second one and I'll show you how I made it ratty looking let's come down a bit so here's the second one and what I did oh hold on got my all I was looking for it got my all and I simply started pulling away at this raw edge of the lace. Remember, I cut it in half. Right down. First I cut it the width I needed, and then I just I eyeballed it and cut it in half. And now I'm just going to sorry my middle finger and I'm not even going to show you it's so I was able to rip off the other half of the nail remember I, I don't know if you remember I told you it ripped about an eighth of an inch below the free edge and hurt like the dickens and then it was catching on things and I just thought I just got to do this I just got and I ripped the rest of it off so and yes it hurt um but now it's past hurting it just looks ugly as ugly as anything hold on there we go ah, now i don't have to horrify you all trust me it horrifies me i was not blessed with beautiful nails and then it didn't help that i spent all those years working in a beauty salon with my hands plunged into the shampoo sinks and perm solutions and bleach and dye and <laughs> any number of chemicals um anyhow i just have really thin thin brittle nails that just break all right so i found when i did the, the other one that it will um it gets into some areas where they're woven together so I just go in and snip it and it will it'll keep fraying so if you just do some little snips here and there it'll get ugly again let's see maybe in here All right, let's see if we can fray that a bit more. Some will come out, but for the most part, I'm very happy with how ugly it remains. Isn't that hilarious that we love ugly old looking things? 
I want it to look like this book is so worn out that yes, at one point it had beautiful lace at the header and footer and that, I don't know, maybe some mice got in and chewed on it or maybe it's just so worn from use. That's what I want. All right, turn this, let me make sure I am in. There, and let's see. Oh yeah, that's nice. I like it. So, little three in one. I'm going to trim this off. out. It's not doing any good in there. Come on. And then I'm going to give it a good push down into that glue. Especially because this is all frayed and I want that glued down and secured. Now, I'm not ready. As I said, this is just a little quick, hi, how are ya? Um, let me come back a bit. There we go. Um, but I will let you see how it's going to look. So this will go in here, like so. Not ready to glue it in yet. That's still a little tacky, and I don't want this side to glue to the inside. The whole point of it being a hollow back spine is that it's glued along the hinges and the back of the text block and the back of the spine are free and clear and they're not glued together, which allows it to open and close nicely. Oh yeah, that's what I was looking for. How cool is that? That's really nice and haphazard looking. Oh, I love it very happy see and I don't want to go ahead today at least on camera I'm still trying to decide if I want to put an eyelet and maybe hang something fun down there not sure yet anyhow so there is there's our little tattered lace uh, header and footer that couldn't be easier you know when I think of the times that I fray and fuss and play with cheesecloth and I really like this <laughs> love it and you can still see from the inside let me turn this from the inside there let me there we go that it was lace at one point and that you know some maybe some mice in the house needed some nesting material and and decided okay this looks like it'll work and went at it Otherwise, uh, yeah, this is ready to um, ready to get glued in, and then the end papers to go down, and then I'm just so happy. I still have a whole bunch of fun little things to do in here. I want to do something with this. I got this at a little antique place. Oh, not so little actually; it was pretty big. Nancy took me there when I visited where she lives. Um, this past July 
and both sides are beautiful it's uh it was a needle book there's still a couple needles in here i think i may get double use out of it rather than put the whole thing in i'll use one side and maybe make a journaling card out of it or maybe make a pocket out of it i haven't decided yet um i noticed down here it says made in occupied japan which uh, for younger people might not know but for a while oh i love that for quite a while after japan surrendered after um Pearl Harbor and what happened afterwards at uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Um, Japan was occupied by the U.S. Um, and so anything that was made there would be stamped made in occupied Japan. Or at least that's as best I understand it to be. Um, I remember as a child growing up, almost all of our family glass ornaments the boxes the tattered old cardboard boxes all said made in occupied japan all over the boxes of these christmas ornaments that we would put on our tree uh, which amazed me and uh didn't know till later anyhow i love this so i'm going to figure out a way to put that in i love those colors it, probably my favorite color combination and it might be the secret little my inner buddha um, I love, I love sort of a wine red color and a Dijon mustard color, which is why I love this paisley um, fabric. And I love that they're wearing red and the background is sort of that mustard color. So it was meant to go into this journal somewhere, somehow. I'm not sure yet. Like I said, got to figure it out. Oh, wait, there's one more thing we could do. How much time have I got? Oh, I got plenty of time. In the center, let me move the cover is my luck I'll spill glue on it in the center signature is it the center one? Oh wait now I don't remember I guess we'll have to find it it's not there is it in number three? Oh, I gotta tell I, I know I keep saying it I'm so in love with this journal I'm just so in love with all the different you just never know what you're gonna find no it's not there Lots of sewing, lots of tattered little pieces here and there. Is it there? Maybe it was the first signature. Oh, there it is. All right. So I want to I, I, I want to make this into a pocket. It was um, I cut this out of a book on the town of Cooksville. And that's a very common name. I bet every single province, every single state, every single county somewhere has has a Cooksville. But my Cooksville is the one that is now, it was a tiny little town <laughs> uh, when my grandmother lived there, was born and lived there. She was born in 1903. And uh, it is now the massive city of Mississauga, Ontario. Um, anyhow, I found... Um, I initially purchased a book on the history of Cooksville because I actually found a picture of my grandmother in the book with her class from school. To be able to see a picture of her as a little girl was wonderful. She had a great big huge white bow on her head. It was as big as her head. <laughs> um, and all of her brothers and sisters were in this book because the Cooksville had one school, had a one classroom school in Cooksville. Anyhow, this book, I purchased it myself many years ago. And then of all things, I was at it and it was full of ads and things out of the Cooksville newspaper. And uh, of all things, thrifting, I found that funny little book. It had been privately published by this woman um, years ago. And uh, somehow or other, it ended up in the thrift store in my little town way over <laughs> two hours away <laughs> from Cooksville. Um, so I bought it up because I knew it had all these cool things in it. And so I cut up the second one. I still got the one because my Nana's in it. From the two Nana's bookmark, that Nana. She's the one that lived in Cooksville. All right, so what I want to do quickly is uh, this got sewn in when I, I leave it open. And uh, so when I sewed in my text block, 
I sewed it in while it was open but now what I'm going to do is glue down two sides but before I do that because you'll be able to open this and see inside I just want to ink that interior so I'm just going to do that now um, in case you can peek inside I don't know it's me it's I just it's one of those little details that I just think it's nice if you're gonna go to this much work really do it up so. this book I love reading through it because it um, every mention of a character out of this town I can place them in my family you know, second cousin third cousin great aunt and the funny thing was in doing it um, I actually figured out because I, I love genealogy I figured out the way I like to say it cracks me up with my own kids that they're related to themselves because I actually was able to connect their father's family with my family <laughs> I was doing his genealogy one time, going through the microfiche. At the time, there was no ancestry online. I I had to actually go down to archives and go through rolls and rolls and rolls of microfiche and hope that you came across something. And I found my great-grandparents in the census and all of their children. How many did they have? Eleven? And there were there they were listed. And then I spotted two houses away, and I recognized the names. And I thought, hold on, I know that name. These names make sense to me. So I pulled out my other binder, because I kept all my information in binders. Like I said, no ancestry. There's no filling it out on computers. And uh, so sure enough, they were next-door neighbors back in the late 1800s, early 1900s. And then usually... In a small town, families marry each other, and I found I found a marriage. <laughs> so that just cracks me up. <laughs> I love it. So my children are related to themselves. <laughs> All right, so so now you can see what I mean. Let me get that out of the way. That uh, when I glue these down, if that opens up, it's um, it's just nicely inked in there. And uh, let me take a look and see if there's any names here. Every single page. No, no, no. No. Nobody on that page. But usually. My, my grandmother's cousin owned the corner store and post office. My great-grandfather was the town... Uh, blacksmith and wagon maker. Things like that. There we go. Alright, and then we're just going to close that up. And that can be a tuck spot. This is a fun thing to do if you've got greeting cards. You can sew a greeting card in and then you can glue it shut and it becomes a tuck spot. Now I'm leaving this here. I really like that little pop of gold and turquoise and it matches her. So um, I know that I want to make a journaling card and I want to put this on it. This was in with a batch of whale tail tabs that Valentina so uh, generously sent to me just a bag of just gorgeous all different whale tail tabs and there's a bunch I want to use in this book that I've picked out and there's actually one back here that's already in with a word snippet on it all right so that's it short and quick today um, and it's not even Saturday who'd have thought I'm going to get back to work here and I want to get this glued into the cover and so i got a busy day ahead of me i hope you have a great rest of your day uh, take care and we'll talk soon
Bye.